today's overview is going to be about having good intonation and trying to supplement good technique with that intonation. Back in college, I was going to my lesson with the first movement of Richard Strauss's violin sonata to my professor. And I go into the lesson. I didn't have that much time to practice prior to the lesson. So I figured that if I showed my musicality, the professor would be like, okay, yeah, you've been really thinking about musical ideas and then we can continue on. But no, the exact opposite happened. I actually, I hate to admit this, but Eric, this guy over here, got kicked out of his violin lesson in college. It was a very humbling moment because I was 30 minutes into the lesson and I was dismissed. And I had to show up to my next lesson the next week trying to figure out a way to play better. The reason why I'm telling you this story is because a lot of us struggle with intonation. And I figured that back then, I didn't have time to practice the scales. I just figured that if I just used my training, I can have a good, reliable intonation and just have my musical ideas show up and make up for the work. But as it turns out, to play at a very high level, it's not just about having good musical ideas in your playing. You also have to be in tune. You also have to have good sound production. You also have to have a knowledge of harmony. And that's what separates the good violinists from the great violinists. Something that has helped me in the past during that week between the, the lesson where I got kicked out and the lesson where I had the, the big improvement and was having a humbling look at what my intonation was like and I was just clearly out of tune with this Richard Strauss violin sonata. So what I was thinking, okay, well, what can I do to help improve all aspects of my intonation and my technique for the next lesson. So I looked at Shradiak and I also looked at Sefcik. And then of course, scales and arpeggios are a given, granted. But if you don't know of the Shradiak, Dexterity of the Left Hand, and Sefcik books, they're great, great tools for every violinist to have on their bookshelf. Because for me, even a week of using these scales and these arpeggios and these exercises has really helped me. And now that I'm a teacher and I'm enforcing this on my students, I can see a huge transformation in their playing. They feel more confident. They are not scared of the intonation. They're actually more assertive in their violin decision-making because they have a good solid foundation of technique and intonation so that their musicality can shine. And I wanna to talk to you about Shradik and Sefcik in today's video because both books serve kind of a different purpose and I prefer to use one for intonation over the other. So I like to use Shradik as my, my go-to for intonation and sound production. In terms of technique, I actually lean more towards the Sefcik, and there are different reasons as to why I do that. For me, I find that the Shradiak, oh my God, I'm so sorry about that. So <laughs> I think I need some air or I need some water. So Shradiak is great at forming a good left hand position. So that way your hand is really trying to get a good hand frame. Let me get my violin. So if I'm playing everything on the left hand, like I'm playing like a lot of um, scales and arpeggios in kind of a fun format. So that way my left hand is really uh, set. So I would like to introduce a little bit of this Shradiak exercise. Let's see, I want to maybe do, let's go to Roman numeral 11, for instance, where I'm going for intonation. This is first, second, and third position exercises. So I'm going to be doing... So all of that, I'm already in A flat major. So that's like the introduction for this uh, for this exercise. Now let's go maybe to number four, and I'm going to be doing maybe more arpeggio stuff. So I'm going to be. So even right there in that one measure, I'm already doing a lot with my intonation with this uh, A flat major. So. And what's great about these exercises is that it teaches the concept of pitch memorization. If you don't know what pitch memorization is, pitch memorization is where if I'm playing, for example, an 
A flat, that A flat needs to sound the same all across the board. So if I'm playing that A flat and that A flat on the D string really need to sound the same as an octave. So if I'm going to play this again, So a lot of this is really based on intonation and good sound quality. And if I were to do this slowly with the student, I would do this one note per bow. So all of this, if you are really paying attention, what this exercise here does is set up the octave beautifully. So I get the C octave and then So I'm setting the C main I'm setting the C octave beautifully here. So that way my hand frame right here is setting up to the octave. Then I go I have that E flat up here. I got that fingered octave there for the fourth and second finger, but that's essentially what I'm trying to go for with my left hand to help my hand understand where the stretches are and where the stretches are not. So, especially from the A flat to the D. I got that A flat octave there. I got the B flat there. So there's a lot to be done, especially in Shrotic, for your intonation. And that's something that I realized within that week between those two lessons. I found that I really needed a, a good, healthy checkup with my intonation. And I encourage you to do that if you're watching this video. I think it's always healthy to double check, record yourself with audio or video to be, make sure that you're doing all the necessary things in terms of your intonation. Now, in terms of the chef chick, the chef chick is a different situation because you are working primarily on just the whole technique of it all. I mean, of course you're practicing uh, intonation with all that, like you can do exercises in the first position, let's say if I'm gonna be working on that. So the Sef Chick has so much to offer in terms of right hand technique and left hand technique. So right now I'm in the first book with first position exercises and I come across uh, exercise number five and then you see there's a lot of tenutos. So I'm gonna be trying to do a lot of right hand technique but also make sure that my intonation on the left hand is really well done. So <laughs> So I'm doing a lot already and then this is another great alternative to practicing scales and arpeggios. If you find them to be very boring, Sefchuk and Shradiak can really make practicing more engaging. I didn't say the word fun because I don't know a person who likes to practice Shradiak. Actually there's maybe one person who I can think of that likes to practice Shradiak. But even for me, there are moments in Shradiak where I'm like, oh this is cool. And then there's also the moments where I'm like, okay, this is terrible. I don't want to do this anymore. But that leads me to my next point about practicing Shradiak and Sefchik and trying to help with your intonation and your musicality. Try to make these exercises musical. Try to make something that is like bare bones and try to really have some musical ideas flowing. So it could be, could be the tempo, it could be the dynamics, could be crescendo diminuendo. For like for even just these two measures, I could be also experimenting with time. You may want to consider different aspects of each exercise. Shradiak, intonation, left hand, good sound, good tone, while technique here on the Sef check, you are actually focusing on specific things. I know that there are many books of Sef check, Opus 1 and Shradiak Opus 1. I recommend those uh, just to all my students if they're, you know, approaching from the intermediate to advanced level and they're kind of sick of scales. This is what I usually give to students. If you're a violin teacher or if you're a violin student yourself, leave a comment down below. What do you think of these exercises? And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I would love to answer any questions. I love to stay engaged with the community and to answer any questions that may pop up. So I'm the one that usually answers everything.
That's it for this week's video. If you are new to the channel, my name is Eric. I'm a violinist. I do a lot of violin tutorials, product reviews, and other violin related content. And if you liked this video, leave a comment down below, hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out to create more content for you.